Hey everybody, how you doing? So I wanted to start monitoring the energy use in my home. You know, we've got kids that always leave lights on and all that kind of stuff. And I wanted to see how much energy which individual device in my house is using. And you can't really do that on smart plugs alone. So I started looking at whole home energy monitors and I came up with a few different ones. Um, it seems like the most popular one, the one you see advertisements for all the time is Sense. And Sense is pretty cool. It's this orange box, really good looking, uh, sits inside of your panel and then has two clamps that go, I'll show you the main service in a second, but on the top of your main service. And then what it tries to do is use AI, artificial intelligence, to learn what the signature, like a, almost like the fingerprint of your stove, of your water heater, your furnace, your lights, all that kind of stuff. And when the company first came out, it seemed like, this is really cool. You can just use two sensors and get everything. But as time went on, it looks like the reviews show their technology maybe not being quite as good as they promised. So yeah, it gets some stuff, but you're still kind of um, left guessing on some other circuits. And it's also pretty expensive. It's like 300 bucks. So not that bad if it's going to end up saving you money on electricity. That's probably, I think our electricity bill is like 100, 110 a month. So if you can save you some money there, maybe it pays for itself over time. But uh, I started looking and I wanted a little bit better, uh, re more reasonably priced option and also something that had um, just more refinement in the number of circuits I could look at. And so I found this, this is the VIEW Smart Home Energy Monitor. And the cool thing about this is it does have the two main circuits. Um, it'll clamp onto your input uh, in the US. There's an option for three phase. So if you have a three phase power, they do have an option that has three inputs. Um, but the other thing it has is all these individual sensors. I think there's 16 on this one. So it has all these individual sensors and these will clamp on each of your branches. So for each breaker, you've got up to 16. It can clamp onto them and read them. So for me, I've got, I think I've got 18 breakers. Um, each of these double poles will count as one. Uh, but the good thing is I'm not using AC. It's winter time right now, so I'm not using AC. So that one can stay off. Um, double poles like this will only see uh, one of these sensors. You don't have to put it on both legs. So I'll be able to get most of the stuff. There will still be some that I'm not quite capturing, but this one down here is for my water heater. This is a, um, no, sorry, the double pole, this 30 amp is for my water heater. That's already got an energy monitor on it, so I don't need to use that one. So I think I'll be covering most of my circuits with this. Um, and you can always take them off and change them later. Uh, so yeah, that's why I ended up picking the view over the sense. It was also, I think I mentioned 150 bucks. So it's half the price of the, the sense. Um, yeah, so today we're gonna go through how to install it and how to get it up and running. And we're gonna take a look at the app and see what everything looks like. Um, if you do end up deciding you like this product and you wanna buy it, I'm gonna put a link in the description. If you could buy this with using the link, that helps me out a lot. I don't have enough subscribers to make any money um, off these videos. So I'm gonna try and do some affiliate links. Um, yeah, so if this helps you and you decide you want this, just click on the link down below. Um, we'll see how it goes. All right, so first thing I want you to do is turn off the main breaker. And so we'll do this. That just shut off all the power in my house. And the reason we got lights because I got a flashlight up there. So best to do maybe when your kids are playing outside or are doing something like that. So main breaker is off. But something to keep in mind when you open this up, this is your main service supply line here. This is still hot. This comes in from your utility. And so without them turning it off on the outside, this is still going to be hot. Um, so you still can get zapped and hurt. So you have to be really careful. Let's uh, Let's crack into it and see what we got. All right, so we've got our protective cover off of our main panel. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna check and make sure that our voltage is turned off to these breakers and confirm that it is still on here on the main. So we've gotta be really careful of the main. So in order to check your voltage uh, against one of these breakers, each one of these breakers has a screw on them. And that screw along the side is gonna be where you can check for power. You can also check along the wire, but if it's installed properly, there should be almost no, insul no bare wire visible. It should be insulation there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our multimeter you can see I've got it set to 700 volts, the high volt setting for this. We're gonna take our black negative lead, put it on our ground and neutral bar. Since this is a main panel, ground and neutral are together. And we're gonna take and just check against a screw on a few of these. And you can see zero volts, zero volts, zero volts. But then we're gonna take our red 
hot lead and we're gonna be very careful not to touch anything inside of here and check on our main breaker. And you can see we got 120 volts there on the left leg and 120 volts on the right leg. And if we take our negative and check it across both legs, you can see we have our 240 volts. So this is still live. And I'm gonna just check one of these. I'm gonna turn the main panel back on and check one of these side breakers just to show you what it would look like. Again, this is pretty dangerous. You probably don't wanna have the main on with the cover off, but, so be very careful. So again, we'll take our black on our ground and neutral bar and our red along here. And we see we do indeed have 120 volts. So just to be safe, we're gonna turn this back off since we're working on the main panel. All right, we can take this, put this away for now, and we'll get to the good stuff, uh, unboxing this meter. So we'll open it up. Uh, it comes in a pretty nice box. Uh, it's pretty dense, pretty densely packed, so it feels heavier than it looks. We'll open this up. And right here on top, we got the main meter. We got a QR code, which will help you download the app, which has all the a link to all the installation instructions. So we'll set this here. It also has a list of everything that should be in the box. So we'll hold that up. And then this first box here is our accessories box. We'll slide that out and set it aside for a second. We've got some more boxes in there. You can see these are our sensors. We've got eight sensors in the first box. And another eight sensors in the second box. All right, so we'll open up our accessories box and see what's in there. We've got our two main clamps that's gonna go on our two lines, our service in. We've got a wiring harness, which will attach to the unit itself, to this main unit here, and provide us power. We have another smaller accessories box, and let's we'll see what's in there. Okay, we've got some pigtail leads. Those are gonna be used to pigtail to an existing breaker. I'm gonna run this off of existing breakers. You do have the option to put two new breakers in and get the voltage on each leg from a breaker, which would be nice because then you could turn this whole unit off without removing the front panel cover. But I didn't feel like spending the extra money for two new breakers that were only gonna be powering this thing. So again, pigtail lead. Here's our Wi-Fi antenna. This is gonna be, we're gonna make one punch out in the box and have this antenna sticking out probably from the bottom. And then lastly, we have a couple wire nuts and some plugs, which will go in the empty uh, unused slots on here. So we'll pop this unit out. You can see it's kind of a tiny unit. That's gonna sit here in the bottom. I will get you a measurement on this because you're gonna have to make sure that you have enough space in your box for this thing to fit. And I don't know if they have it on the website. So, you know, itself from top to bottom is about four and a quarter, four and three eighths inch with the extra protrusion for the Wi-Fi antenna. So we'll see what the installed height is. You can see here along the sides, these are all the ports that you're gonna have for your individual branch sensors along the top. They got three ports. Uh, for us, we only have two phase, we have 220 volt legs here. If you were in a more industrial setting, you might have three phase, you might have a third 120 volt coming in, so it can measure that as well. Uh, so the next step for this is to punch one of the knockouts in here, in your panel, for your Wi-Fi antenna. For me, since I'm going to install this in the bottom, um, probably right here in the center, even though I've got quite a bit of wires, I think that's probably going to be the best spot for it, is right down there in the center. So I'm going to punch out one of these bottom holes for my Wi-Fi antenna. And I've got one clear one right here that I'm going to use. So all I'm taking is a screwdriver and a hammer. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get you guys a good shot of this, but let's try. So what you want to do is take the screwdriver. You can see there's a bit of a tack weld here and a tack weld here. And you're just going to hit with the hammer on there to pop that out. There's plenty of videos on YouTube showing you how to do uh, pop outs.
So you can see when I hit it with a hammer, I got one side out, then you can just take the other side, bend it back and forth a couple times. And then installing this is pretty simple. You just take, push it in from the bottom. And it just snaps right in place. And you can orient the antenna so that it's facing roughly towards your Wi-Fi router. So now we take the unit, we take our connection here. We take the unit with our antenna connection here on top. And just keep screwing that down until it's tight. And then you've got this rubber boot. Just push it down over top, set the unit there in your panel. So you can see with my unit right here, the installed height is actually gonna be a bit more uh, than just the height of the unit itself. So let me grab a ruler and we'll get an idea of roughly how much space you need because I don't think I would even be able to put another breaker in there uh, with this as is. Um, we might be able to locate the unit over on this side, but then I'm not sure how it'll work with the connections. So if I have to put more breakers in here, I'm gonna have to shuffle things around a little bit to make it work. It looks to me like the minimum installed height is about six inches with bending this wire without getting it too sharp of a bend. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have six inches from the bottom of your panel up until the top there. Got a bit more clearance on this side, but you can see if I was using the breakers all the way to the bottom, I wouldn't be able to use this unit. Maybe locating it off to one side or the other might help. Um, you can see I can tuck it over here. I'm not sure though, we'll, We'll see in a minute how all these connections work if I'd be able to fit everything in. Um, for now, I don't need that space, so I am gonna leave it here right in the center. All right, the next step, and probably the most dangerous one of this whole process is to take these main uh, units and I'm gonna connect them up over top of those breakers. Now, there's only one thing that you need to worry about with this, and that's getting the proper orientation. I'll bring this in close. You can see there is an, a K to L line and the K needs to be on the service side. The L is your load side. I don't know what K stands for, but L is probably load. So just make sure that it's pointing towards your load or your breakers. It's labeled pretty clearly, but just make sure you get that right. And again, K to L. Those are clipped in place. Take these twist ties off. And we'll run our sensor wires down here out of the way, around to the bottom to our unit. And you can see we've got an A, B, and C here on the box. We're gonna connect these up um, just to A and B. And then we've got a plug that we'll put in C. Okay, so we have our main power sensors connected up. The next step is going to be getting the unit itself power. Just to make sure that video doesn't go too long, I'm gonna cut it off there. So we'll have a part one, which we just did, getting the main unit in. And the part two will be installing the remaining 50 amp sensors on all the breakers and getting the power to the unit itself. Don't go anywhere, it's not that much further along. So if you wanna see the next video, it should be up the next day or two. Uh, in the meantime, click subscribe and then you'll definitely get a notification when it comes up. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Um, if you didn't like the video or if you think there's something I could do better, let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see in the next ones. And thanks for watching, until next time.